as he prepared for the second inaugural address, he wanted to make clear to everybody that he, Lincoln, understood that the war had been a war to free the slaves and not just a war to save the Union. And he wanted to make sure that everybody understood that slavery was done forever in the country. Fellow countrymen, four years ago, all thoughts were anxiously directed to an impending civil war. All dreaded it. All sought to avert it. Neither party expected for the war the magnitude or the duration which it has already attained. Both read the same Bible and pray to the same God and each invokes his aid against the other. And Douglas was there in the front row listening to Lincoln's inaugural address. There's a great photograph that shows Lincoln at the lectern, Douglas with his big hair, that's how you can recognize him, and in the balcony is, is John Wilkes Booth. Yet if God wills that it continue until all the wealth piled by the bondsman's 250 years of unrequited toil shall be sunk, and until every drop of blood drawn with the lash shall be paid by another drawn with the sword. What you see in the second inaugural is not a certainty of victory, but a certainty of the rightness of the struggle, an almost biblical, righteous, prophetic vision of why this struggle was necessary. As was said 3,000 years ago, so still it must be said, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. His consciousness of something bigger than himself and the need to recognize that a form of pain had existed in America for generations before he came along and would not instantly be solved. It's a statement of the need to rewire the country, to change its moral axis. He's now telling a new story about what America should be. Who are we? What do we believe in? With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations.